scientists that look at mortality, many of them look at mortality altogether, uh, all cause non accidental mortality. But cardiovascular mortality, of course, is at the most severe end of the spectrum of effects for cardiovascular effects. So the next slide shows our association for long term exposures. That was short term exposures, such as um, Dan Greenman was talking about the time series studies that look at acute changes. These are long term exposures, this means exposures over years of your life, what, what kinds of effects does that have? And we again have drawn conclusions that PM2.5 relationship between long term exposure to PM2.5 and cardiovascular effects, including mortality. And mortality is the, the broader category, again, are causal, likely causal for respiratory effects, and then um, less evidence for reproductive and, and cancer relationships. So if you move on to the next slide, it, it, a real brief overview of the long-term exposure studies for PM2.5 that are going to be discussed in a lot more detail by Dr. Pope, Dr. Krusky, uh, a whole range of speakers. But Looking over it all, we concluded causal relationships. There were consistent associations with the mortality in a broad range of studies now. And I highlight the Harvard Six Cities, American Cancer Society, Women's Health Initiatives are really large cohorts. There are quite a few other cohorts for which uh, associations have been um, reported. There's epidemiologic association with cardiovascular morbidity. Uh, cardiovascular health effects less than mortality in the Women's Health Initiative study. There are new animal studies that we didn't have animal studies looking at long-term exposure to fine particles and cardiovascular effects in the previous reviews, but there are new studies using different animal models that show evidence of things like atherosclerosis development, changes in, in vascular related effects that give plausibility to the relationships you see in the epidemiologic studies. The next slide is one of those figures that Dan Greenbaum explained briefly. This is the associations from long-term exposures and this is a, a, a broad range of effects includes mortality and cardiovascular effects. You can see the mortality effects. On the whole, what we're seeing here is positive associations. That means they're on, on the right-hand side of the line, not including a null effect. Many of them are statistically significant, meaning they don't cross that central line. Um, so there's a general pattern of positive associations. These are ordered um, in terms of, of the air quality. So they're ranging from lower concentrations. So the mean there is presented at 10.7 for the very um, lowest concentration area uh, and up. So you sort of see a pattern of associations even in some of the lowest concentration areas there. And the next slide just briefly recaps the short-term exposures to PM2.5. Again, we determined causal relationships. Here this was based on a, a pattern of consistent associations and epidemiologic studies for a broad range of cardiovascular effects, hospital missions, and then more subtle effects like uh, heart attacks, and also cardiovascular mortality. Um, looking across epidemiology, toxicology, and, and uh, human studies, human experimental studies, you saw myocardial, myocardial ischemia, which is like heart attacks, uh, evidence for that in all different types of studies. There was uh, evidence in the experimental studies for changes in vasomotor function, which is um, consistent with the effects you see in epidemiologic studies. Um, I won't belabor these points because they get into technical details that probably isn't needed. What the body of evidence altogether in this 2,000 page document that we produced really came together to suggest causal relationships and the um, Clean Air Scientific Advisory Committee supported that. I threw in this slide just as it, these often are show an example of the types of relationships that the subtle effects that you can see that lead up to these and the more subtle effects like the oxidative stress types of and inflammation are things you can often see in animal studies this shows the pattern of coherence and plausibility of the underlying potential mechanisms that lead to things like hospital missions or mortality that you uh, measure in the epidemiologic studies. And the last couple of slides uh, focus, the next one's on fine particle constituents. This is something we've been trying, we've been paying more and more attention to. In this document, we, we focused on studies that looked at uh, source relationships and ambient particulate matter. There's, different types of approaches to using source apportionment or 
comparing effects across studies with different components and ambient particles. Uh, overall, the conclusion was many components are linked with various health outcomes, um, but it's not sufficient to be able to dif differentiate effects of different constituents on different health effects. It is logical to believe that different constituents could have different effects. Some effects could be due to irritant effects, some could be due to inflammation, so that you could have different types of particles being more associated with different types of outcomes. At the bottom, I put a couple examples of some hints of the evidence, um, like cardiovascular effects in some of the source apportionment studies seem to be more related with motor vehicle emissions, the combustion sources, and even also crustal road dust related sources. The mortality association seemed also to be related to combustion sources and uh, sort of a transport source. But these were just real hints. We really couldn't draw main conclusions. I think this is something that there's growing attention. There are more and more studies looking into this, and this will be a focus of our, our next review. Uh, the, moving almost to the end, another thing we've looked at is the relationship, the shape of the relationship. How does it change? How does the risk change over the concentrations? And, uh, and there have been quite a number of studies. I, I picked this one out of the Women's Health Initiative that just shows the patterns of relationships. Overall, the, um, we haven't been able to identify a threshold or a place at which health effects seem to stop across the really It seems like a log linear kind of relationship that runs across the distribution of, of air quality data. This is just one study. Um, I think you're going to see many more of these kinds of slides. And so our last, I'll just draw some conclusions on the last slide. It's a tremendous body of research. EPA itself is, is spending billions of dollars funding grants and uh, some intramural research into the effects of fine particles, and that's really, really building and, and uh, coming to fruition now. There's increasing coherence between the disciplines, between the epidemiologic and the animal uh, studies on the types of effects that you see. Uh, we conclude causal relationships now, especially for cardiovascular types of effects for fine particles for both long-term and short-term exposures. And there's a growing body of effects um, that you can see with the different constituents. At the moment, it's really, we can't rule any constituent in or out. It seems like all of them seem to have some um, effect. And we, we still, we don't identify a, a, a bright line at which health effects begin to occur. And that concludes um, our basic. So.